Today I'm going to talk about um, the one-line sketch technique. It's really to loosen up and help you smash more sketches out of the, the park. I'm going to use three simple examples and uh, you know it's just daily stuff that's occurring uh, around me. Uh, I've been going out for uh, little walks and then I find myself in a little cafe and have a drink and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use uh, these examples to show how you could uh, do it on its own, sketch a drink like that on its own or, or incorporate it uh, within a larger uh, sketch motif. So the first example, as you can see, I try to have my pen draw the line. So as you can see, uh, within under a minute, I think it's about 40 seconds, I am using one single line. I badly mangled the sketch, but uh, what it did was it allowed me to really loosen up and not get too distracted with tiny details and accuracy. Um, remember, if you get the macro right, and even though you get the micro wrong, it will still look pretty good. So I think that's the whole idea of a one line sketch. It allows you to just loosen up and uh, if, even if you don't like this technique, it can be used to just get your first sketch in knowing that it is full of mistakes, but it doesn't matter. It gets a line going, it gets something done and you have uh, somewhat of a drink with straw and teaspoon sticking out on the other side <laughs> with a bit of a uh, bits and bobs um, you know red fruit and blueberry floating in the middle of the drink uh, it's a banana uh, milkshake by the way so the whole idea really is just to get that creative juice going even if you're in a rut uh, you're not obliged to create reality you're not obliged to create something that is so good that uh, you'll be you know sweating over it in this case it's really just to get that uh, creative juice going to get that uh, energy uh, going and as you can see I'm just dabbing in colors that doesn't exist even in reality uh, but uh, using somewhat of a yellow orange red purple uh, color scheme um, I'm just smashing it in and now I'm just putting a bit of a background just to provide some contrast to the little uh, you know, glassed if you like. So that's it. The first example of how I smashed in uh, the uh, drink, uh, the one line sketched. Uh, and, you know, remember, it is really about getting creative juice going, right? All right, more example of the same, but this time uh, slightly more complicated. It is a uh, plastic cup with a, a can drink at the back. Again, one single line. Uh, the pen doesn't really leave the paper. Uh, and I try to basically go around in one flowing um, sort of line with crisscrossing and with disregard for reality, but it's just going th around what I see. And, you know, even the decoration of the can is, um, I try as much as possible to not leave the paper. In other words, uh, the pen is just flowing and dancing around. Well, I did lift it up but I try to go back to where I left it, the last spot. And, uh, and sometimes you do need to think about what else you need to add on. Uh, so, you know, don't be too restricted and be too rigid with the technique that it must, you know, uh, be one line and you don't have to leave the paper. But you could, you could just go back to the same spot and try to, again, use a flowy style and to finish up whatever missing parts that you think um, you, you know, might have missed. Just come back to it. So uh, that's the drawing, uh, the one line sort of uh, uh, dabble um, with uh, this, this uh, second example. As you can see, I have very little regards for the accuracy of the lines um, in this technique. It really is just to get uh, the energy going and to get some sort of a sketch on a piece of paper. Uh, I use it oftentimes just to warm up, uh, to start my session. Uh, do a little doodle. They may could be basically just um, two inch by two inch sort of a one line sketch. Uh, they could form something that stand alone, or it could form uh, more of a uh, part of a larger sketch, if you will. But it doesn't uh, really matter. Uh, what matters is that you have started. You have hit something on the paper. You have smashed something 
uh, out of the park, right? Um, here you see that I'm putting in a bit of a shadow. Uh, I, I intended to put a shadow first so that it pops the, the, uh, the glass or the plastic uh, cup in front uh, away from the can, if you like, uh, separating the two planes. Even though I have very little regards for detail and accuracy, I still like to think of uh, planes, three-dimensional. I'm still creating forms. I'm still sculpting uh, the, you know, the sketch, if you like. Uh, try to give it a sense of three dimension uh, by gradation, by shadow, by using different planes, and uh, you know, just to create some sort of a uh, structure uh, that your mind can construct. Remember, you're putting your lines and colors on a piece of two dimensional paper, but what you're trying to create is a sense of three dimensional form and structure in the eyes and mind of your audience. Uh, here you can see the blue in the can, uh, the reds and the green, and I'm trying to just dab on uh, where I see it uh, as well, just to give it a sense, an impression of the can and the decoration uh, of it. Uh, didn't use the right green, and so it's muted, but um, anyway, you can see that uh, it's just, a, uh, like I said, an impression of the, the can and the drink. So as you can see, I'm leaving the sketch at real time, uh, they are no more than 2-3 minutes at most, uh, maybe 5 minutes if you really labor over it. But because of the line that was done in under a minute, and the sketch which is really just to dab on, uh, and uh, you, you know, using uh, various sort of uh, color scheme, in this case it's uh, uh, again yellow purple, right? Uh, the rest of the colors are just decoration but the bulk of it is really shadows uh, being a bit more purplish and then of course the drink I have made it a little bit more yellowy so um, the color scheme would work right and uh, now I'm just going in with a bit more darker patch of uh, purple to create a bit more depth a bit more three-dimensional a bit more separation between shapes and uh, I'm thinking all the time not to overdo it because it is really just a a sketch, right? A one-line sketch edit. Uh, the third example, I'm going to use this uh, little IKEA uh, plastic horse, uh, which I decorate uh, uh, some parts of my house. <laughs> we put it next to the glasses, and it looks quite nice. Uh, and again, the pen. Try not to leave the paper if you can. If not, even if you leave, you just come back to it. So I try to draw in along with all the. Uh, three-dimensional stuff that I see uh, I was looking at it at an angle uh, the photograph is not quite at an angle it's quite flat but I was looking at it at an angle I could see the three-dimensional sense of the line so you know I'm just drawing in the edges including the shadow as well uh, all in uh, one flowy uh, economical sort of line um, and I also put in uh, parts of it where I see the shadows um, and uh, where I could not get accuracy, I go over it a few times. But I try to leave it uh, as few, uh, you know, duplicates in the same area as much as possible. Sometimes when it's not, it doesn't matter. You're just going over it and you're just trying to create the whole sense of uh, the line. Where I think I made a mistake, I go over it and I repair it. So I think that's the drawing of the one line. Uh, that uh, you've seen a couple times now, but this is the third example. I hope you get the idea. It's uh, really just to loosen up and get your pen flow going. And you know, when you start staining your uh, sketch, uh, really it's just to uh, smash in uh, what you see with a bit of playfulness uh, added in as well. So the idea here now, I'm going to smash in the different uh, colors from yellow to red. Uh, for dark, I may put in a tad of blue. Uh, even though you see the color here being red, uh, but uh, I don't really have a very, very light uh, red, so I use yellow as a proxy for the lighter part of the, the red. And I'm going to, you know, by the time I finish with the red, you see that it becomes sort of a polka dot uh, design, but it doesn't matter because uh, at the end of the day, your eyes will see primarily red in uh, the sketch. So red in there, there are lots of reflection where I'm going to leave uh, paper white to leave uh, to kind of reflect the uh, white reflection, you know, um, where my eyes is seeing white. So, you know, again, I'm just uh, dabbling in and it's, uh, that's one of the lessons as well. Try not to, you know, color something 
uh, like a two-year-old where you just put a space and if it's a big sort of a shape you put it the, exactly the same color uh, you know left to right top to bottom right well no right if you look at the the photograph of the horse you would see that it is full of uh, gradation full of shadows full of different colors and you could play with that you could literally just use that as a guide not being precise but as a guide of where you put your light color in this case i'm using yellow and your dark color where i'm using red with a dash of uh, uh, blue in it uh, to be exact it's permanent alizarin crimson added with french ultra marine and so that color slightly purplish or you know if you like shadow red becomes the part where it becomes the darkest part of uh, the sketch uh, of the horse so like i said earlier it has become more of a polka dot <laughs> design uh, again it is quite fun to play with it uh, not accurate so when i was looking at it i thought hmm maybe i'll just try to make uh, the uh, you know the sketch pop by having something way darker in the background uh, like almost like a shadow uh, i even decided to let it melt into the sketch itself uh, so to make it you know it doesn't make the sketch like looks like a sticker on a piece of paper but with soft edges thrown in on the dark uh, uh, purple it will look pretty much melted into the paper uh, and uh, that's actually one of the techniques that you gotta remember just to make sure that your sketch doesn't look like a sticker it needs to have soft edges uh, in some parts of the sketch so that's it i hope you enjoyed the three examples and you try it that the one line sketch works uh, especially to loosen that uh, your sketch up and give you a good sketching session bye